Welcome to this edition of Business Redefined. Now, the full year banking earnings season is behind us, but we can never have enough conversation on the banking sector. We want to talk about United Bank for Africa, UBA Bank Kenya, and I had a sit down with the Chief Executive Officer, that's Chike. The starting point of our conversation was taking stock of the 13 years ever since the Nigerian bank ventured into the Kenyan market. We came into Kenya with a very clear purpose to support the businesses in Kenya. You know, stemming from the fact that as United Bank for Africa, we are set out to support African businesses across our various present countries. You know, so coming into Kenya was very strategic because we see Kenya as the hub of the East African market. <laughs> Well, um, for the 13 years we've been here, we, I think our earlier focus was actually more on the corporate stroke commercial business space. Um, it, of course, it had its own challenges. And over this period, we've learned lessons. And um, we, just like you have indicated, are in support of what is going on within the retail space. The business in Kenya is asset driven, so it makes it a bit challenging particularly when you look, take the risk perspective. But beyond that, it's a sector that we're getting very comfortable with and we have structured to ensure that we play actively in that space. Banks in the Kenyan market are aggressively competing for lending to the micro, small and medium-sized segment of the economy, but the challenges presented here in risk pricing are significant. So I asked Chike, what is UBA's strategy as far as the SME segment is concerned in the Kenyan market? Looking at 2021, that's really when we took very deliberate space um, decisions to participate in that space. We're just building up gradually. Um, currently, it's not so significant in terms of percentage, but uh, if we were to put figures to it, maybe about 15%, we're growing it because we've set up a specific desk to look after the MSME space and equally the retail space you know, in its entirety. It's a difficult space to play in, but we are building the competence and the capacity to be able to do that. Yeah, what, what we are doing is, um, first of all, leveraging on um, our understanding of that business space, um, the micro, small and medium-sized businesses, stemming from both in Kenya and even across East Africa, because we have presence in two other East African countries, Tanzania and Uganda. So by the time we look at the market space around this area, it enables us to understand the business dynamics. Of course, these are mostly businesses that are either set up for subsistence uh, with very low capacity in terms of absorbing some of these facility requests that they are making. But it's important that we leverage on the business growth in the economy and the fact that the MSME businesses are the drivers of the economy. So whatever we do internally, we are conducting training for both our staff and even for these businesses because it's important that we are both running on the same page, the businesses understand what they need to build a sustainable business and of course, our relationship officers and managers equally understand what these businesses need to succeed. So that synergy is important for us because as we harmonize this approach, we're able to build, support these businesses and ensure that the support that we give to them, be it in terms of training, be it in terms of uh, loans, are ones that the business need and they're able to grow with it. From, from UBA um, across Africa, um, you know, we've um, over time realized that, look, African businesses most times start from the family-based businesses, they grow. Uh, of course, uh, the challenge businesses in this space are equally so much. But the important part of it is that they need support. So the, the Tony Elumelu Foundation Entrepreneurship Program 
is one that you know set out it was set up in 2015 with a clear mandate to create support for African businesses in terms of initial seed capital of $5,000. But more important is the fact that it has a mentorship and a training program attached to it. So you don't just give somebody a seed capital and let the person you know, lose. And at the end of the day, the 5,000 USD capital comes in and does not impact on the business. So the mentorship program and the training programs around it is one that guides these entrepreneurs and ensure that they come up, create employment, create wealth for themselves and for their communities, but more importantly, they're able to sustain themselves as a business. Across all these African countries, the 54 African countries where these entrepreneurs are, we seek to support them in realizing this dream. In Kenya, most importantly, um, I think as a last count, um, the beneficiaries of this program in Kenya are over 700, and they have an alumni within which we're able to relate with them, give them the needed support, give them the needed guidance in terms of business management, financial management, and um, we've over time equally developed um, programs that enables us to reach out to them collectively and guide them on the things that they need to do. Then for those who need additional financing as they grow their business, we equally make such available to them. Now that we have heard from the CEO regarding the Tony Elumelo Foundation and what it is doing, let's listen now to a beneficiary of this generous seed funding. Damaris Agweyu, the founder and leader of Kazini, a local business venture, gives us her story. Kazini is an online media platform that is looking to drive systemic change in our societies through empowering storytelling. So um, we use the power of stories to not only uplift and inspire, but also um, try to change the narrative on the African continent and give voices to, um, give a platform for different voices and perspectives to be heard on the continent. The reason we are gathered here today is to fulfill the first promise to invest 100 million US dollars to identify, train, mentor, and seed 10,000 entrepreneurs in 10 years. From the very beginning, it was a very exciting thing for me. I had been hearing about it. And then um, uh, in 2020, somebody just pushed me to apply. They said, what do you have to lose? And yeah, what did I have to lose? So I went ahead and put in my application and uh, forgot about it. Um, and then uh, I got a, a response back from the foundation telling me that um, I'd made it to the program and then there were various steps that we had to take so after you've been um, accepted into the program there's training um, and at every stage they're shortlisting further and further um, they gauge your business acumen but at the same time they also um, provide you with the right training to be able to run your, your business and this was very um, helpful for me I have run a business before, so running a business is not something new. But this particular program helped me um, to view it as a founder, which is a very different journey than if you come into a business and you run it. So as a founder, you, you know, knowing things like um, about corporate governance, um, how to even just select and employ the, the type of staff that you need. So for me, that was, it was both exciting and very um, educational. The seed capital I got was $5,000, and um, that has really helped me amplify the business. Um, like I told you, we are a storytelling platform. So some of the things um, we're looking to do is get people, get more people to know about us. Um, because we feel it's important that um, we tell our stories from a slightly different lens, um, a sort of alternative storytelling, 
um, about Africa. So talking about um, uh, stories that can inspire others. Um, in, this, in that sense, um, we would like audiences to be exposed to those types of stories as well because it's important for people to have that hope and positivity, especially um, in the times we live in and also for the future. So the Tony Elumelu Capital really assisted me to get the word out about, about Casini. And um, yeah, for me, it's just the beginning really right now. I think I've had people talk to me and ask me, how did you get in the program? What do I need to do? And people overthinking the whole thing. I would say, I would use my favorite phrase, uh, just do it. <laughs> just go for it. Um, so for me, my advice would be just apply. You have nothing to lose by applying and you have everything to gain. You know, even if you don't make it um, in one year, there's consecutive years which you can keep trying because the process is very transparent, very open and very fair, I would say. So yeah, just do it, just go for it. If you have an idea um, and you believe in it, then you can get started from there. We take a quick break on Business We Define. We shall be back with a lot more on the conversation focusing on United Bank for Africa, the Kenyan business. Welcome back to this conversation on Business We Defined, where we are focusing on the story of United Bank for Africa, the Kenyan business as UBA Bank Kenya. We began part two by focusing on the Tony Elumelu Foundation, disbursing seed capital, $5,000 to promising business ventures. That produces the briquette, it is compressing the briquette. Okay, my name is Rose Goretti Akuku. Oh, first of all, I want to thank the Te Foundation for they give an, as an opportunity to be innovators and entrepreneurs. I came to know of the Tony Elumelu Foundation through National Newspaper, which I regularly buy for my hotel. So when there was that advert, and I say, why not try? so that it can help our people, especially those living with our co in, within our community. Like the one I'm doing, it's for making the briquette. This is an alternative source of fuel energy. We want to eliminate charcoal because of the deforestation, you see. So, so if we, we, that is why we came up with that. That is why we started the Infinity Briquette. So when we want to de do away with the deforestation, we have to introduce for our people an alternative source of fuel, now like the briquettes. Because currently the charcoal is very expensive. Uh, very few people, they get access to LPG gas and electricity. So if they, we can sell like the one we are selling a kg at 50 and it burns four times longer than, than charcoal, then it is better. It is better for uh, for our community and even for our country at large. Yes, if, if we can uh, increase our production, then we are just planning that it, it, very many people get access to it. We applied online. Unfortunately enough, we were one of the applicants who went through the whole process of the training of those people who are supposed to get the seed capital from the foundation. So within Kenya we were many, we were around 5,000 and then we went through again to the training and then we went to another level. Again I was shortly listed and then in the final, the final stage was very tough, it was very competitive because you are very many countries within Africa who are competing and even as Kenyans we were many but through God I cannot say that it was my strength. I, we went, I went through with my team because we were supporting each other so that is when now we are allocated $5,000 
US dollars, yes, that each of the participants who are able to go through are getting. So I am one of the beneficiary. Okay, this money means a lot to us. Because as you can see that I'm working on my backyard, it is very small. So this money was meant to buy at least a piece of a plot where we can do the whole production work so that we may not interfere with the neighbors around and that we may do our work comfortable under shade. We may have a place for placing our dryer and uh, all those things which we need in the production of the briquettes. So that money was meant to buy for us a piece of plot for the work. It was meant for us to increase the buying of the raw materials like the ones you are seeing here. It was also meant to buy the machines because currently we are working on the semi, semi model machine. It is small and it doesn't work faster. The production is a bit low than the, than the demand, the market demand. So we wanted also to buy a machine the produ the molding machine and even the mixer we also need the mixer we also need a, there's another one called the grinder because when these raw materials they come in bulk we need to sort them after sorting them and then we grind them first of all as a business owner as an entrepreneur or Somebody will just have a business idea. The starting point is to apply, you know, to be a beneficiary. You send in your application, send in your business model, your marketing strategy, um, the, the relevance of this $5,000 in the business, because that's very important. When you set up a business and um, you are seeking for funding, you must have created a business that that money that you are seeking when he enters the business, is able to impact on the business. So that is very important, the market that you want to sell in, what differentiates you as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, perhaps from the so many others within your environment or within your sector. So once you've submitted all of that to the, to the evaluation team, the evaluation is done and um, the winners are selected. And once they are selected, they become beneficiaries. Then, of course, through the bank, the funds, are made available to these beneficiaries. Um, the, the one for 2022, uh, I think we just completed the application process, so after which the evaluation process will now start. Uh, if, if, if the business is already set up and already running, then it becomes additional injection, capital injection into the business, but it's purely uh, it, will it be right to call it a grant, but it's purely just a support for the business, not loan. Okay, for, for most family-based businesses or businesses that are initially set up as subsistence businesses, it's important to, to have a vision around it because it's the vision that determines how far you will go. Really, how, I mean, what do you want this business to become tomorrow, one year down the line, or perhaps five, ten years down the line? And in that process, the next thing to do is to really set up structures that can support that vision, that can support how you want to scale the business over time. Then thirdly is the fact that in running the business, <clears throat> as an entrepreneur, you most times are in the driving seat, but you need support uh, staff, you need support structures that will really enable you to continue to drive that vision that you have. What you see with most businesses is that it centers around one person and without that person being there, the business does not function, which is one of the main killers of most businesses. But once you have a business and over time as the business is evolving and you are scaling, you are building support structures that will enable it to get to the next level and surpass that next level. So it's, it's important. And in Kenya, one I've seen, even across Africa, you've seen that there are most of the, more, uh, the large corporate businesses that we currently have, most of them are actually started at these very low levels of maybe a shop, a trading shop, which is very subsistence. And over time, they've built capacity 
brought in maybe partners, brought in, um, uh, created directors that now support corporate governance and due diligence, and they become very large corporates. So it's very possible, it's just to have the right vision, have the right structure, and most importantly too, have the right financing partner. For UBA Kenya, retail um, space is one that we really seek to be very active in because um, uh, you, you look at Kenya, you look at the, very, the population, you look at a very active youth population as well. We, in most engagements, we've come to see they are very IT savvy. Um, FinTech is a very strong um, um, has become a very strong business engagement and innovation in Kenya. You know, so it's a, it's, um, a space where we think there is so much that can still be done. Um, yes, there seem to be a lot of active um, banking relationships, but there's still a lot of people in Kenya that don't have very active banking accounts or banking relationships. So that unbanked uh, part of the society uh, the people that we are trying to reach out to. And that's why we've, um, in the last um, quarter of last year, driven some branch expansion. We opened a branch in Mombasa, we opened a branch in Nakuru. All of this is to ensure that we reach out to areas of the, of the country where we were not present in before, because the retail activity is very critical. Uh, it's driven both from the corporate end, the government end, and now, of course, the individual end. Because, for instance, we are managing key corporate relationships. It's human beings that drive those relationships, that drive those entities. So as you bank the corporate or as you bank the government establishment, you equally have to bank the people that drive those um, businesses. So the retail space is very critical for us. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for, for us, uh, you know, it's um, uh, because we had limited our branch network within Nairobi. So really, the issue of headroom for us is still very, very large. I mean, we, we, we need to be in very strategic locations outside Nairobi, and that's why we're very selective and very targeted as to the cities that we go to, so that we're able to reach out to different areas of the country, create the visibility that we need. But it does not take away the fact that um, there's no way, for instance, in Kenya we'll have the number of branches with other banks, for instance. But it's important that we create the presence. Then we equally support this with our very broad digital play, because that is the, really the new banking hall. Uh, we, 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 we don't need to be, for instance, in uh, some counties to have customers in those places, because we're able to reach those customers through our digital platforms. The NJC banking is equally one that uh, we're driving across board because um, with already established uh, businesses that have networks across the country, it makes it easier for, right, for us to ride on their existing platform, reach out to our customers in those locations, particularly for those who want to still have physical transactions. Because uh, in, in, in Kenya and even in Africa, as it were, a lot of us still believe in that physical transactions, even though there is very broad acceptance of uh, the digital banking um, uh, platforms. But some people still want to get to a physical banking environment, and that's where agency banking plays a very key role. Uh, for us, using agency banking, we're able to reach out to a broader spectrum of the society in terms of enabling them to still transact. I mean, the POS terminals and instruments like that are available for us to be able to do that. And that takes us to the close of this edition of Business Redefined, where we have been focusing on the story of United Bank for Africa, the Kenyan business that's UBA Bank Kenya. We shall continue highlighting issues around the banking sector, so stay tuned to Business Redefined.